You'll have to excuse me if I'm a little bit croaky this evening because I have got the COVID uh, for the first time ever. I'm fashionably late getting it, but as a result, my voice is probably a little bit croakier than average, and I probably sound slightly odder than average, but there you go. So here we have the Rocinante from The Expanse, the official ship collection, also sponsored by Prime Video and Alcom, apparently. Um, I do really love The Expanse as a series. Um, I wasn't familiar with the books. I have them sat on my shelf. I have yet to read any, I must confess. But for those unfamiliar, which probably won't be many of you if you're watching this channel in the first place, um, The Expanse is set... Ooh, how can I do this in a non-spoiler way? Basically, it's largely in our solar system with very realistic real-world physics for the most part. And as a result, it features very realistic spaceship combat. And as you can see from the Rocinante, um, she has a great big main thruster at the rear here, which is used to great effect to zip around the place. But she also has these, um, no, they're called PPCs. And they're, they are sort of um, point defense weapons, basically. Um, but they're also used as offensive uh, weapons at times as well and um, the stuff at the front here is just is just sort of um, you know sensor arrays and stuff I believe but she does also pack um, torpedoes uh, missiles if you will um, which are often used to affect in space battles as well um, I don't think I'm missing any of her other major armaments I think that's about the lot. Um, she does get other stuff later, but again, I don't want to spoil anything for you. So I'm just going to shut up at that point. But do watch it. Um, it's it's what I would term quite a grown-up series. Um, it's not one to start watching with your kids, because it's not Star Trek. Um, there's dismemberment and stuff that happens on a fairly regular basis, things of this nature. So yeah, don't, don't, don't use it as an introduction to science fiction for your kids, because you will regret it. Um, she is a, a Martian ship, actually, um, and she is what is termed legitimate salvage. Um, for again, for reasons I can't really go into uh, without spoiling you for much of the um, the plot line. Um, I'm, just trying to, I'm trying to read the back sticker here, which is a sticker for some reason, without glasses, which is not a good idea because I'm ancient now. Okay, I'm just going to go into it. I'm really hoping. I'm really hoping that this survived transit because I'm already worried looking at the um, the sort of sensor arrays and stuff on the front. Oh, hello. Oh, here we go. If I'd known this, I could have given you the... I've got, I've got a spiel I can give you there that I can actually read. <coughs> the Rocinante is a Corvette-class light frigate that was commissioned by the Martian Congressional Republic Navy, MCRN, originally named the Tachy, or is it Tachy? Tachy? Tachy. Tachy, I think. Um, the ship was renamed after Don Quixote's horse by James Holden. Uh, he and his crew salvaged the Tachi. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, normally the ship would be operated by over a dozen crew with additional room to carry a contingent of marines, but Holden was able to su successfully run the ship with a crew of four. In addition to standard weapon system, the Rosinante is equipped with three reconnaissance drones, which are called uh, Pert, Lee and Light. Life's, Lifson? Lifson? Okay, cool. Um, each model is based on the original CG models used to create effects for the TV series. So in theory, this should be as you know near as damn it to show accurate as you can get. So this is the sort of thing I was worried about, but you can see that they've taken measures to try and protect the um, the top PPC turret there, which is smart of them. So I'm sure we do get more of a weapons breakdown. These big boxes used to come with more of a magazine in them. They don't seem to be doing that these days, which I think is a bit of a shame. Um, because, you know, it would, it would, it's, it was always a nice thing to have with, with the, the other Eagle Moss um, models that I, I've had earlier. So there's the, the sort of, it's obviously going to be a sort of a, what I would, would call a belly stand. Um, I found this with alien ships as well. They tend to sort of sit in a sort of cradle effect rather than the, um, the Star Trek ships, which have their tend to have their sort of saucer sections held. So that's that for those boxes. Let's get rid of this. 
So you notice that um, the polystyrene is definitely gone now. This is just sort of this kind of more sort of foam type stuff that they're using these days. Oh, there she is. I'm really hoping her nose survives. I do worry about... Actually, actually, um, while I think about it, I had this really great idea, actually, for trying to protect the noses. Um, I might tweet it to here and collect them later. Um, just if they put a sort of cap on, it would really help them, I think. Happily, she's survived. Um, yeah, she's nice. Let's get the box out of the way. Excuse me a moment. Clunk. There we go. She's, she's a, I'm just figuring out where to hold her best. Um, I don't want to knock the cans off myself, that would be silly. She's a bit of a beast. That is definitely amongst the larger of the XL um, Eagle Moss models that I've had. And arguably she is the prettiest. Um, I love the way that they've, they've reproduced the paint. Um, I love the fact that you can see all of the... Um, the sort of armour plating on that. I don't know if it will quite focus on there for you. But I think you can probably make out the sort of the tiling effect on, on the paint there. But that's really nice. Um, I think that's... Does that say Wilson Nante there? On the top? Possibly. Possibly. Um, but the lovely thing about this is that because it's so realistic, you get her sort of spinning kind of, you know, on tail tails to nose like that to, to slow down um it's really really incredibly well executed cgi for, and physics for the um, the way in which space battles are conducted i mean you know if you've ever played any sort of vaguely realistic um space combat game you'll know exactly what i'm what i'm talking about here because you know if it, if it does real world physics then you know that's kind of the sort of these are the sort of tactics you will see in the expanse so that is really lovely. Oh, that, that, there's her, um, that's a, a little sort of um, painting on the side there, her logo, if you like. What's the, what's the proper word for, for that? Um, won't come to me. Um, it's like what the Serenity had painted on, it, on its side. Um, and Bombers had, like the Memphis Bell had, and you know, they'd have a sort of a scantily clad lady on the... Um, on the hull to the note that, that was that was the ship but it, that is a really really lovely ship um let me land land it now i'm trying to figure out which is the best way to is it this way around she goes it could be maybe the other way it looks like it could go both ways actually I think the tail is probably one of the safest places to... No, I don't think she's going to land like that, actually. So the, the tail is probably one of the safest places to hold her. Because it's away from anything else that might get bumped. The actual um, point defence cannons are actually looking... actually look quite sturdy. And even the... Even these structures on the front here aren't, aren't bad at all but you would have need to be careful about knocking them i think um it's a bit like when i got the the sulaco and the sulaco had a um an antennae so that was ha kind of hanging by a thread when i got it because it obviously it's it in inevitably somewhat been bumped in in uh, transit but touch wood she has come through just fine she's carrying quite a lot of weight it's um the cradle's going to have to sort of do pretty well to hold her, but it is doing. Um, so considering I got this on, um, of all things, Solstice Day, which as I say, given it was a sort of to do with planetary alignment and all that stuff, I thought it was eminently appropriate for me to get an expanse model finally. Um, but I got a good 30% off. And um, I have this in my collection because it was definitely one of my would like to have and i've got a place kind of lined up for it alongside a bird of prey and, a, and an alien's dropship <laughs> which is which is nice um so yeah i mean I, I can't find anything to not recommend with that and given that it's derived from the the cgi model for the show i'm assuming that is pretty much as accurate as it's going to get so far as they physically can do it um so yeah i'm i'm I, i'm loving that i'm I'm really loving the paint job as well because it's a lot less uniform than a lot of the the ships are you know it's got a lot of um delineation with the sort of the martian red and the, the, there's a black and there's gray and there's silver on there it's really really nice 
Um, I don't know how well that's that's coming out on the video for you, but yeah, I, that's that's that. I, personally, I think that's well worth the money. So, um, just say it's just a little bit of a shame that we don't get any more detail about the ships um, in a magazine format anymore. They seen that, which is um, which I think is a bit of a shame, but you know th that is what it is, I guess these days. So um, yeah, cool. Right, I've got um, one more thing that I've got in this order to show you, so I'm gonna have a look at that next. Cheers for now.